What's going on, my boys? We are finally back with the last part of the mod tutorial breakdown. Now, if you're joining me today in the last episode, which I'll have in the description, we made ourselves a dump, which is an integral part of the modding process because this is how you will have the ability to add mods in whenever you want. You can make your own custom mod packs. Overall, it's just a really big convenience to have your own dump. If you're successful, you should feel good about yourself. You should. Because making it to this part, a lot of people have difficulty with. Now, I know there were some people with issues, and I did my best to try to help those that I could in the comments. But, of course, I'm not a whiz kid when it comes to this stuff. I'm more of a script kitty. So, it, not even. That's actually kind of like giving myself way too much credit. I'm not really well-versed with the whole modding thing. I don't really know how these programs work, necessarily. And if it comes to troubleshooting certain technical issues, I'm not the guy to ask. But I did link to an extremely informative and helpful post by NW Player, which helps to troubleshoot some of the common issues that people may have in this process. So, I'll have that in the description. I also put it on the previous video. And I'm going to hopefully make things easier to understand in this video too but it seems like a lot of people were also able to successfully get the dump working so those guys i'm glad that i was able to make the job happen for you all so let's finish this thing and put it in a casket right now because as soon as this is done i think i might just do like a faq video and then once that's done everything's complete and we're ready to move forward with the actual mod showcases finally after fucking two months so if you're picking up from the last video, there's a few things that should be in check for you already if your dump was completed. There should be two files left on your desktop that we have not used yet. Smash 4 Explorer, the zip, and CSS Editor. You're also going to need your SD card, and on it should be the following files. You should be having the Wii U folder on the root of the card, and you should have the private folder as well. With these two, you are solid. Now, you should also have your dump which is located in your main hard drive. So if you go here, go to your local disk, you should see DDD as a folder and Smash. This should be the folder right here. The folder should be a total size of 13.6 gigabytes. So if all that is in place, and you should have some folders in there as well too. If you don't have maybe this folder or the save folder, you're okay. Don't worry about it. As long as you have code, content, and meta, you're solid. Feel free to close out the smash dump folder. You don't really need to actually go directly in there for most of the time. But the next thing that you guys are going to want to do is put in a new folder on your SD card. So make it totally brand new and you're going to name it one of these numbers which is going to pertain to the region of the world that you're from. So there's a US one, a European one, and a Japanese one. And depending on what region of the game you dumped, you're going to add the number corresponding to the region as that folder's name. So you're going to, for me, it's gonna be the first number here. The number's way too long for me to speak out, but it'll be on the screen, it'll be in the description too, so just copy and paste. So we're going to paste that as the folder's name. This will make it so when you're actually putting the mods in the dump, it'll instantaneously transfer those mods over to the SD card once you finish them. So with that folder made, you can close out the SD card. Remember, that folder is very important, so make sure it's always there. With that folder set up on your SD card, now you can move on to the Smash Explorer part of this. Now, my folder had a couple of issues because with virus protection, it deleted the executable file that you need inside of this. So if I open this up really quick, and then we're going to just export the folder that's inside of that zip file down to the desktop. We can delete the original zip file. Some people were saying, how do you open up the zip file? Download WinZip, man, it's that easy. Or 7-zip, either one. Do you guys remember when we downloaded the Smash 4 Explorer folder in the previous tutorial video and the virus protection would always think that it was a Trojan or malware or some kind of malicious software? Well, I had the problem where every time I would export it, it constantly deleted the Smash 4 File Explorer file here that we need. That's an executable file. It thinks this file is the virus, which is absolutely not. However, the way to make it so it doesn't delete this file automatically on your PC is to just turn virus protection off when you download it, keep it off until you actually export the file to your desktop. Then you should be good. I managed to calm down mine so it's not doing it this time, but just make sure that you turn off virus protection until you have the Smash 4 Explorer folder extracted to your desktop so it's not a zip anymore. Another important thing, we are working off of the desktop right now, so I'm not sure if this would be a prime place for you to put your Smash 4 Explorer folder. It'll make more sense as we go along, but wherever this is located, once you have it there, you can't really move it. Otherwise, you'll have to relocate it again and connect it to your dump. So make sure that you have this in a nice place, 
it's comfortable, that you don't mind it being. And uh, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to work off of it on my desktop for too much longer, but this is just be where it is for demonstrational purposes for now. But put this folder anywhere you want and make sure that it's somewhere comfortable and easy to find. So for the sake of demonstration, we'll just leave it on the desktop for now. And I'm going to make a shortcut of this file here. So create shortcut right here to the smash file explorer right there. So we can close the folder out, leave that big folder right there, and we're going to go and open Smash 4 File Explorer. So now it's going to say a couple of things. First, indicate the folder where Smash 4 can find the latest version of the game. Now this is where you're going to link it up to your dump. So we're going to hit OK, and we're going to go to where your local disk is. So I'm just going to go to this PC, and my local disk is the C drive, so hit that. Then go to Smash, then go to Volume. And inside of the volume folder is where the rest of the contents are. So just hit the volume folder, make sure it's highlighted, and hit OK. It's going to tell you the game region and the version. Those are totally fine. You don't need to change them. And hit save. It'll save it for your region, of course, not just USA. And project created. So once that is good, you are good. We've reached a brand new point in the mod tutorials, and now it's time for the fun part. And that's the reason why I changed my shirt, because I needed something that was a bit more fun, you know, something more representative of this moment. Guys, it's time to actually find some mods. So what we're going to do is go to this website. I want you all to bookmark this, because it's probably going to be extremely important to you if you plan on installing a lot of stuff. It's called GameBanana.com. So you head over there, and one part, one actually before you bookmark it, you probably want to bookmark it when you go to the Smash Brothers for Wii U section. So you're gonna go to Games on the top and click Smash Brothers for Wii U. So bookmark it at this point. This is what I did here, as you can see from the star at the top of the page. So now let's look for something relatively simple, just to show you the fundamentals of adding mods to your dump. So what you're gonna do is go to your skins, and then. Let's see, we can actually search it by character name. So we're gonna go to Corin Skins, and let's find something to install. So they have a bunch of stuff on here, and there's a... There, there. As I was saying, there's a bunch of variety on here in terms of colors and uh, textures you can add on. So you wanna just choose something, let's just, I don't know, let's just choose something uh, interesting here. So. They have an Elise Corn, so let's let's download that. So I'm gonna open that up in a new tab. And let me see, what else do they have here? They have the uncensored female corn as well, too. So let's add that on board. Because you know, we gotta have the barefoot waifu in her full uncensored glory, my boy. So we're gonna close the initial tab. We're going to go to the Elise Corn skin here. So it looks pretty nice. Got the purple theme going on with the blonde hair. Very nice effect in the gray sword as well. So we're going to look for the download link. It'll say manual download. This is the same format for all of the mods for Smash, regardless of if your skins are not on Game Banana. So just go click download manual, everything's there. So we're gonna hit download right here. And it's starting to download. And now we're going to get the uncensored female corn so we can use that in combination with the Elise skin. And yes, in some situations you can combine mods like that, depending on the type, of course. So yeah, this one actually is really good too because it breaks it down to where um, it's very canon. Because she apparently wears the pa it, it's not like you know they're, they're very revealing panties that she wears. So I mean, it's it's canon, man. It's in Fire Emblem. You can't be mad. You can't be mad. The official artwork has it there depicted like that too. So this is a more accurate. Um, this is a more accurate, uncensored comedy. So we're gonna download that one too. Click that link. It'll send you to another page, and just hit download again. So now we have both of these mods installed. Well, rather not, they're not installed yet. Don't, let's, let me not jump. Let me not jump ahead of myself. But we have them downloaded. So now we can close out this page. I'm gonna drag them over to the desktop. They'll come in zip files. So you have to extract both of these to your workspace. Your mine is a desktop. So we'll just drag them to the desktop. At least corn. We're gonna drag that over there. We can delete the initial zip file, and then we have the uncensored Conway as well too. I'm gonna go to that. Drag and drop that here. It's actually just called Kamui, so we're gonna close that out. And from here, we are good. We can delete this um, zip file as well for the uncensored Kamui. So you're gonna go to data, you're gonna go to uh, fighter, look for Kamui. They go by Japanese names, some of the characters. So if you can't find a character, they might be in their Japanese on Smash 4 Explorer. So I know Kamui is, Koopa, Bowser is as well too. I think everybody here goes by their Japanese name. So if you're looking for a villager, you ain't gonna see villager in the V section down here. You know, you're looking T-U-V, yeah, you don't see villager here. He's actually gonna be Murabito, as I remember from the Japanese demo. So up here is villager. But anyways, going back to Kamui, you're going to go to model, body, 
and you're going to see all of these numbers um, kind of like listed in order. So these are the actual representative folders of the different palette swaps that are available. So C00 is default male Corin, C01 is default female Corin, or female Kamui, as I like to say. And then number two is the second uh, Corin skin, then number three is the second Kamui skin. That's the way it works. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that when you put everything in, you take account of zero being the, def the default skin. So we're going to open up the Elise Corin folder here. And here's where it's located. These things are relatively easy to navigate. So you can see it says skin. We're going to go to Kamui, model. We're going to go to the same folder that corresponds with what we're changing. So this is the body folder. We're going to go to body. And actually, oh, OK, it already actually has an uncensored option from the same guy who made the uncensored mod that we already had downloaded. So we actually don't even need the uncensored mod folder that we downloaded. We can just delete that and use the uncensored version of the Elise mod right here from Mr. Kisuke. Kisuke? Kisuke? Mr. Kisuke, thank you. And by the way, big thank you to this mod creator as well. And I'll leave links to this in the description too if you want to download these specific ones. And now, so as you guys can see, it says C00. That's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth palette swaps. Now, you might wonder what these L ones are for. Those are for 8-player Smash. For some reason, it has separate files for their own character palette swaps in 8-player Smash. I don't know why that's the case, but this guy made sure that he put them in for not only the first 8 slots for regular Smash, but also for 8-player Smash as well, too. So we'll just install every single one of them. Now, we're going to go to this one, and here we can see... That, you know, since it's the Elise skin, there's only one palette that needs to be changed. So we need to choose one of these to change. Now, I know default male Corrin is number one, um, number zero. Number one is default Kamui. Number two is um, male again. Number three is female. Number four is male. And number five is female. So I'm thinking we'll just change number five. I think that's the pink skin. So we're going to open this folder up. We're also going to open up number five, which should be the pink female Kamui. Now we are going to drag and drop all of the files from the mods folder. From here, drag and drop them to the CO5. Make sure you click them there because if you like try to drag and drop them here, they might have an issue. But make sure you, whenever you're dragging the files for mods, always drag them on top of the folder itself. So once those are dragged over, you'll see them turn green. Green means clean. It also is a good indicator of where your mods are installed. So now you see any folder that has mods, you're going to see that it turned green. So the Kamui folder has a mod in it, model has a mod, body has a mod, CO5 has a mod. These are the mods right here. So once that is done, you can just close it out. Now what other files are in here? So we have the mods for the body already installed. Now we also have the dragon hand. This is another folder inside of the Kamui folder. So let's open that up real quick. As you can see, the Kamui folder is green, indicating there's a mod there. And now we, we're going to open up model again. We can close C05. Now you can see there's a dragon hand folder here as well, too. We're going to go to that. And we change 05 for the Elise mod. So we're going to open up 05 here in the dragon hand folder. And we're going to drag and drop all these files over. You can skip over anything that's not an actual mod file, like this one, the ID 153. You don't need that inside of there. So once that is there, we're going to go to the next folder here, Spearhand. That also needs some changes as well. So we're going to go to Spearhand in the mod folder and drag and drop all the files from the mod folder here into the Spearhand folder for the corresponding skin. And that one is 05. So we're going to drag and drop them right there. And as you can see, 05 is now green. So it's clean. Next is the folder Water Dragon. So we're going to drag and drop the Water Dragon files from the mod folder over to C005, which should be the pink Kamui. And remember, those are all corresponding to the same palette that we changed in the previous one. So body is 05, Dragon Hand 05, Spear Hand 05, Water Dragon 05. Everything's 05 here. So once that is all done, we can actually close that out. Are there any more files that we need to install from here? Actually, we didn't install the um, we didn't install the L files either for eight player smash. So let's actually do that since we're going to be thorough with this. We might as well. So go to model. And now we're going to install these for eight player smash. So here we go. Um, we're going to go to L05, which is the pink one, and drag and drop all these once again. Make sure to highlight every single one of them. So how do I do that? There we go. All of them highlighted. Drag and drop them to L05. And there we go. So 8-player smash, it'll also be pink 
Kamui that's changed to the Elise Kamui. With all that out of the way, we have finished installing the Elise mod for Corin, and therefore we can close out all these folders right here involving the body and whatnot. I mean, we don't really have to in the long run, but I like to just because, hey, it's tidy. So once we close all of those out, let's go back in the actual mod folder and see if there's anything else that we need to install for this. Oh, okay, this is actually a nice surprise here because, as you can see, CSP is in the mod folder. This means character select portrait. Now, when a lot of people make these mods for different palette swaps or different models altogether, sometimes they don't include a custom character select portrait, so you're forced to use the default one that comes with the game. So what if we use Elise skin as a Corrin mod for the number 5 slot, so it's supposed to replace the pink Corrin, but we still see the pink Corrin on the character select screen. This is a way to get really confused really fast when you're using mods. Eventually, you won't know where is where and what's located, and it, it gets really confusing. So big props to any mod creators out there that do go ahead and put character select portraits for your mods. It makes them easy to find on the character select screen. I love you for that. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. So now let's install the custom character select portrait for the Elise mod on Corrin. Now we have to find where this file would be located. So we have four folders inside of it. CHR00, 11, 13, and stock 90. So we need to locate these in Smash 4 Explorer. Now, before every mod showcase, I will always show you exactly where the files are located that you need to drag and drop your mods to, so don't worry. I know where this one is offhand too. So we're going to go to UI, we're going to do replace, I think. And we're gonna go to append up here. And now we see the folders for the mod that we need to change over. You might be asking yourself, why is it blue, Etika? If there's a blue folder in Smash 4 Explorer, that means it's DLC. Some people will also ask me, Etika, do I need the DLC to be able to use all this? No, you don't have to purchase a DLC or anything. This doesn't unlock DLC for free for you, so there's no stealing going on here, but the files will be included in your dump, and they are there for you to change, so when you do finally buy the DLC, the character mods will be installed right there for you. Anyways, so as you can see, the CHR00 folder is here, so we're going to open this up in Smash 4 Explorer, and as you can see here, we have the palettes for Kamui, so there's eight of them in total, but you need to be careful here, because when we open up the mod folder for CHR00 here, it's going to give you an XX where the character portrait number normally would be. So of course, you are all saying you put 05, right, Etika? That's the pink palette swap that you're switching things over, therefore you'll have the custom Elise character select screen model 405 instead of the pink corn, which is the one that we're getting rid of. But no, because for some reason in these folders, it's actually not starting at 00 for the default male corn. It starts at 01. There's no 00 here for male corn. So that means male corn is 01, um, female corn is 02, then male again, 03, 04, then 05, and 06. So you have to make sure that you go down one number. So 05 is where it was in the model folder, but here it's 06, that's the pink female corn. These are little things you have to pay attention to when you're installing your mods. Make sure to name your files correctly. So in the mod file itself, since we know it's 06, that's pink corn in this folder, what we're gonna do is change this mod file to 06 here where the XX was, drag and drop it to the CHR00 folder right up there. So now that's changed over. So next is, CHR11, so we're going to once again change the XX to 06, which is the proper place for pink Corrin's palette here in this folder. So now what is this one, CHR11? We're gonna open this up, drag and drop it right there, and that changes. Green is clean, remember that. So the next folder is CHR13, so we're gonna open this up over here, 13 selected, and we're going to change the number to, uh, wait, no, no, we don't wanna open that. We're going to change the number to 06. There we go. Drag and drop that to the folder. And now stock 90. This is another folder down here. So we're going to minimize this one and open up stock 90. Change this one to 06 for female corn, the pink model. Or it will be the Elise corn now. And uh, 06 selected. Now we're going to drag and drop it to stock 90. And bam, you should be set. So now with all this done, you don't really have to minimize the folder, so you can just go now to Project, Build the Mod. Once you hit this little tell you it's rebuilding the mod and all this other stuff, let it do it. Hit OK, and it might take a little while if it's the first time doing it, but usually for smaller mods and ones like this, like palette swaps or model changes, nothing too big at all. 
So once that is done, you're going to see a pop-up window which asks you, do you want to put these mods on your SD card? And if you made that new folder on your SD card with the corresponding name for your region, that's how it'll ask you this. If you didn't make that folder, it won't ask you and you'll have to put it in there manually yourself. So it says, do you want to copy the newly exported mod to the SD card? Yes, we do. So once it says right here, if this is the first time with the SD card, this operation will take three to eight minutes. No biggie. This is only one time thing anyways. And then once that's done, it won't have to do that initial boot up and it'll just go straight to putting the mod on the SD card. So now it finished that initial process and it's adding the mods to the SD card. And just like that, it's fucking complete. Really, really fast stuff. But now that that's done, you can basically close out the actual mod folders. We don't even need this anymore. We'll just delete it. Um, no, not add it there. We're going to delete that. And then we can just close out Smash 4 Explorer over here as well too. Take out your SD card right here and put it inside of the Wii U. Now it's funny. If you guys actually want to see the mod itself, we'll just put it back in really quick. The folder that we made with that name corresponding to your region, if we open that up, this is where the mod is located. So how big is the folder in total? You're going to see, not that big, only 50 megabytes. So nothing too crazy. It didn't put the whole dump on your SD card. It just put the mod itself, just the modified changed files. Now it is possible, even if you don't have a dump, for you to have that folder on your SD card and play the mod itself, but you won't be able to add mods in yourself or customize stuff. You'll be able to only deal with the mod that you have on this. So that's why it's good to have a dump, because with a dump, you can add, take away whatever you want. It's convenient, isn't it? Anyways, I'm going to put the uh, SD card inside of the Wii U now. And once we have the SD card in the Wii U, we're going to go to the um, actual gamepad screen now. What I want you guys to do is go to the web browser. Now you should have those two bookmarked websites available for you right there on the home screen. The website that you're now going to go to is not the NW Player one, but the Lodine one. So you're going to hit that one. And now you're going to see this site here and you're going to have a bar. Click the bar. It's going to give you a drop down list of different things that you can do. Make sure you hit SD caffeine plus kernel. You can always you can also hit the um, box here to make it remember that option for future use. Going to hit submit. You have to go through this step every single time you want to play Smash Brothers with mods. If you played Smash right here without going into the browser, it wouldn't show the mods. But you have to do this to be able to play it every single time you turn your Wii U on. So now we go back to the browser really fast. Go back to that bookmarked Lodine site. And it shouldn't take you to that previous menu. It'll take you right here to this part instead. So it'll load up. It'll take you to a black screen with some text on it. And here you just hit the A button. And now it sends you back to the Wii U menu. So from here on, your mods are now... Um, available to start running off of Smash Brothers for Wii U. You can actually take your SD card out now if you wanted to and it wouldn't fuck with the process at all because the exploit is already running. So you're, you're totally fine. Let's put it back in though. I just want to show you guys that it's totally fine. Only do that process if you turn your Wii U off and turn it back on. Then you have to run through the browser exploits again. But now we can load up Smash Brothers itself and let's pray to God that I didn't fuck something up royally and that these mods are actually working. So if this is all good then we'll see the results. The thing is, with mods and everything being loaded off the SD card, you might see a somewhat longer load time, and the more mods you have, the longer it might take Smash Brothers to load up, which is why I have a Class 10 Extreme Pro Big Dick Flash card, so that way it all runs faster, but I know that doesn't really make a difference after a certain point, but still, you'll see noticeably longer load times, but nothing too crazy, you can deal, especially considering that you have so many amazing mods running off of your game, I think that's a very small compromise that everybody here will be willing to make, right? Anyways, it's running now. So we're going to click OK, start it up. So now, if this was successful in both regular Smash and 8-player Smash, instead of the pink female Kamui that we normally would have available to us, we should see a totally different brand new palette swap instead, which would also indicate the new model was successful too. So let's move over. We have regular default corn, that was 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, and 0, 5. And as you can see, that is definitely not the standard 0, 5 pink female Kamui palette that comes with the game. That is our mod right there in its full glory. And it should be uncensored too, because that was the folder that we pulled things from. 
and as you can see the custom character select icon is so important because what if we didn't have that option to us then we wouldn't know what the fuck the mod was after a certain point it'd be kind of hard to switch things out but thankfully this one had it with it please mod creators i don't want to sound like an entitled dick and of course i appreciate all the mods and the palette swaps and the model changes that you guys do but if you could potentially include character select screen portraits, that would be amazing. You don't even have to do stock icons. Just character select screen portraits because so people know where things are. I don't want viewers to get like confused or anything. But you can do whatever the fuck you want to do at the end of the day. So let's just go into a random match. And we'll start this up real quick. Uh, I just wanted to showcase it for you guys so you can see it in action. So we're going to start. Let's just do FD. But yo, it seems everything was successful, so we should be seeing an Elise colored Corrin here. And sure enough, we do. It does look a little bit like the pink Corrin, but way better, man. Way better. As you can see, it's got those Noor colors going on, and you even have the, um, the symbol of Noor on the back of her cape. Really nice touch there, by the way. I gotta say, really nice touch. But everything here looks great, man. I mean, as you can see, the skin itself, the armor looks amazing, and of course, totally uncensored as well, too. So this is the way Kamui was meant to look. Oh, God, panties and everything. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is fucking in the... <laughs> that, that, is, that is fucking amazing. Wait a minute, let's take a better look at this. Let's get a better, better look at this shit, man. Hold on a second, bro. This is legit. And her eyes are even purple. Holy shit. My boys, that's all it is. Now you can put in as many wild mods as you crave. The only confusing part about all this is, Edco, how do I know what to put in Smash 4 Explorer? I said like three times now, I'll show you before every single mod showcase video and it'll be quick. I'll be like, hey guys, here's where to put the files for your mods in Smash 4 Explorer. That's where to find them. Have fun. And now I'll show you the mod itself. So, yo, we are solid, man. She actually looks cool with the um, with the pale blonde hair as well, too. Really nice armor. It kind of kind of gives me a little bit of a Camilla feel as well, too. But really nice. Um, as you can see, extremely nice armor. <laughs> <laughs> Why is her ass paler than her actual skin is on her feet or something? I don't know. But, it, hey, I'm not complaining. This still looks amazing. <laughs> you see, I got the shirt on for it, right? You got that, we got that fucking, that, 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 um, that conquest family right there, man. We got that fucking Nor family right there. Nor for life, my nigga. What are y'all niggas fucking with? Yo, this is so clean. So, yeah, with all that said and done, we have installed the mod successfully. Now, there were a lot of mods out there that are a bit more complicated than this. So, we will be going through all those, of course, too. Some of them may include installing more complex stuff than just some model changes in the folder. But, like I said, I'll show you guys where everything is located ahead of time in the actual showcase videos themselves. So, don't worry about it. But, yeah, there's a lot of different kinds of mods. There ain't just skins out there. There ain't just fucking palette swaps. There's a lot more other stuff out there, guys. So we will be going into the deep, dark world of Smash Brothers mods in its entirety for the rest of this summertime. This process took a while to set up, but hopefully at this point, you are good. And if you guys have any other questions about this, you can definitely let me know on Twitter. Like I said, I'm not really that good at troubleshooting this kind of shit, but I will do my best to help you guys out if I know how to solve your problem. You can also feel free to ask any of the other mod heads in the community. They are more than happy to help out any newbies, if possible. Just don't fucking, like, don't don't completely, like, bug them out. Because, you know, they're people too. They need their own privacy. They need their own space as well. But, yo, this is it. This is the last mod tutorial video, basically. Um, we have nothing else to really showcase for you guys. Can't wait to actually go to the showcase video. So, with all that, I will see you all later on. Thank you once again to these amazing mod creators. A link to their stuff will be in the description. And, uh can't wait for the rest of this month i will talk to you all in the next video take care of yourselves and of course as usual please have yourself a damn good one i know i will be having myself a damn good one these mods are on point.